because it feels real to me. It doesn't feel rehearsed. It feels like this is raw. This is energy. Dastardly Hamster, where we try to convert each other into fans of our favorite bands. So Liam, our ages are only when you're apart and you grew up in the 90s, as did I, and somehow don't know who Pearl Jam is. I know who they are. I've... Oh, okay. All right. But you don't know any Pearl Jam. Probably not, but it's possible I've heard them before. All right. Well, I'll ho I hope that you at least recognize something. Pearl Jam for me is one of those bands that if somebody says, uh, what did the 90s sound like? <laughs> okay. They sounded like um, Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Soundgarden. <laughs> okay. I, I get the Nirvana. Yeah. So uh, Pearl Jam and Soundgarden are often sort of looped into roughly the same genres, a lot of the same fans, and the same uh, ubiquitous lumberjack shirt. <laughs> okay. So is this a grunge band? <laughs> we get so many comments of when we miscategorize something <laughs> by even a little bit amount. So I will check to make super, super sure that they are indeed grunge. Does anyone else feel that Pearl Jam isn't grunge on Reddit <laughs> nine years ago? Wikipedia says grunge was commercially successful in the early to mid 90s due to releases such as Nirvana's Nevermind, Pearl Jam's 10, and Soundgarden's Da Da Da. Okay. I know Nirvana. I actually know a couple of Nirvana songs. So okay. I would expect it to maybe sound in the realm of nirvana but when i think pearl jam this is just from the name i think something closer to what you would describe as hair metal i don't know why that name gives me that impression but i'm i'm imagining like a, a mix between hair metal and grunge um let's see if you're right Okay, we're starting with a strong emphasis on the bass. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if that's going to go the whole song or if that's just going to be in the opening. They don't eat, don't sleep, they don't breathe, they don't see. They're the gums when they moan and squeak. Lift the dirt off. So vocals are interesting. What does it remind me of? It's got a little bit of a southern twang to it. Not much. They're definitely from nowhere near the south. <laughs> they don't have a country twang? Maybe a little bit in this song. At the beginning, I can kind of hear where you're coming from, but they're famously from Seattle, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's pretty north. <laughs> Okay, so I really like how he's going really high with his vocals there. It almost feels like he's stretching his vocal cords beyond where they should go. I like it when singers break their vocal cords. <laughs> like, it, I, even if technically it might not be quote unquote good singing, I actually love it. It's my favorite thing ever because um, it feels real to me. It doesn't feel rehearsed. It feels like this is raw. This is energy. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I really love what he did with his vocals there. They don't scale, don't fight, don't oppress and equals give their rights. Starve the poor so they can be well fed. Line the holes with the dead ones.
So that was an interesting solo. I felt like it had a lot of like really short notes. It also didn't sort of go in the direction I thought it was going to go. Mm-hmm. So normally with solos, I expect it to keep getting higher and higher. That one didn't, which is good. The pacing of the notes and the direction of the notes. I would just say it was a surprising solo. I don't know how to describe it other than that. For me, it um, it felt kind of 60s. It yeah. Like a, like a sort of Jefferson Airplane or CCR yes. solo or something. Jimi Hendrix on a day when he's feeling a little bit under the weather or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, something think... about like the echo or something. It just felt 60s to me. <laughs> It's, it's got to fade out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mind fade outs. I know you're not a fa- fan of them, but... I'll not like a fan, them. but they were from the 90s, so I'll, I'll give it a pass. So that was a pleasant surprise that they had an outro at the end there. And incorporated with the outro, they actually did some guitar soloing within that as well. I did feel it was a bit slow for an outro. I feel like if it's going to be that slow, it needs to be a bit more powerful, but it was fading out too. So mm-hmm. it wasn't really a powerful outro, um, but I do like that it had one. Everything else I really loved. Um, I'm debating... Uh, you know what? I'll give this a five out of five. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> because, right. because what I appreciate about this song so much is how the vocals take an unexpected turn. Here's when I get bored in songs. I notice this happens a lot in metal songs. Not that only metal songs do this, but I get bored when the vocals are using the same notes as the guitar. And this, that clearly is not happening. Like the vocals are doing their own thing, which I love. Um, The verses were interesting. They were really short, actually. And there was enough variation too. Like we got the bass intro, we got the solo in the middle, and then we got the outro and we got a chorus that I really love. So even if I'm not sold 100% on that outro, I might even, (laughs) but you know what? There are other songs like that that I would still give a five out of five. Baba O'Reilly, Teenage Wasteland. For me, I'm going to give it four out of five. Hamsters. Okay. I like the song. I find it's uh, a little bit slower than what I normally like, but uh, mm-hmm. it's a classic, and I love I love the part where he goes rats. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the you know the imagery and the comparison, comparing humans to some of the you know worst aspects of rats. Maybe doesn't go as deep as some other music that I might listen to, but uh, for me it's a fun time and and uh, a heavy on the nostalgia. Well, that's it for us, Hamsters. Spin your wheels down to that subscribe button. And give us a dastardly thumbs up.